me tell you right now, I wanted to love this movie, and sadly, I did not. I felt this movie was so lifeless and bland, and really much the only thing I really did love about it was actually the poster for the film, because you actually see the names of each star above their head. It always bugs me when I see a movie poster, and you see all the stars in the poster, and then, like, the names are completely off. I don't know if that's just my OCD or if you guys feel the same way, but the 355 is a lifeless spy thriller that has a lot of problems. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, we're going to be discussing the 355 in a non-spoiler review. And of course, this is about when a top-secret weapon falls into mercenary hands, a wildcard CIA agent joins forces with three international agents on a lethal mission to retrieve it while staying one step ahead of a mysterious woman who's tracking their every move. It's directed and written by Sam and Kinberg, who, if you know him, you, you know he's a pretty big producer, done a lot of stuff with the X-Men universe, and of course did finished out the X-Men franchise with X-Men Dark Phoenix, which I thought was fine, had some decent moments to it, but again, just walked out fine, and that movie now looks great compared to this one. But let me say that this film does have an amazing cast that had me on board, which is Jessica Chastain, Lupita Nyong'o, Diane Kruger, Penelope Cruz, Sebastian San, Edgar Ramirez, and Bin Bing Fan. Now, I have been actually looking forward to this. I love Kick-Ass Women, I love Jessica Chastain, I love Lupita Nyong'o, and I love the rest of the cast. The fact that these women were going to be teaming up to be these badass spies, and I was getting this Born Ultimatum type feel from the trailers and all sorts of things like that. That, so you count me in on that but god was this boring and bland and lifeless and i'm sure there will be an audience out there for this movie i can't express that enough there will be someone who watches this review who thinks it's one of the best films they've ever seen or one of the, their favorite spy thrillers and that's totally fine like we're gonna have a great discussion here and i want to hear your guys thoughts down below in the comment section and if you're new here and you love talking movies make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well so we can keep talking movies over here on a daily basis but talking about this movie i wore an in and out shirt on purpose because the purpose of in and out is when you go eat in and out you enjoy it you love that fast food you enjoy that nice burger right but then you kind of forget that you ate it like a couple hours later that's how I kind of feel with the 355. I watched it. I sat there. I was like, you know, if I didn't know anything about this movie and I went on, say, FX or USA Today, like either of those channels, and I was flipping through and this movie was on, and I read the description. I'm like, this is an amazing cast. I like the concept sounds cool. Let's watch it. You're going to watch the movie and you're going to think it's good. And then you're going to think about it later and be like, what did I watch again? Oh, yeah, the 355. Now you're going to completely kind of forget about it. And then you're just going to think to yourself, yeah, that was fine. It could have been better, but it was just fine. And that's how I left this movie. It was just feeling that it was fine. When in reality, this movie should have been great. You had everything laid out for it to be great. And I just feel like there is so much about this. But if you guys know me, I love talking about film appreciation. And I do want to start with my pros because I do think there are a lot of great elements in here that definitely hold the film bar none from being honestly shit. And that is thankfully because of the performances here. Jessica Chastain kicks ass. She's awesome in this movie. And I wish she had a vehicle for this for a franchise that she truly deserves. Because the film pretty much feels like it's building up to have this next nice spy thrilling franchise. But it never gets to that point to where you want that next one. I sat there just waiting for the movie to get over. And I know I'm talking about the film appreciation part. But... I really loved Jessica Chastain in here, and I thought she was great. Alongside Lupita Nyong'o, who I thought is just, she's one of the best actresses working out there. She's fantastic in here. Both their chemistry works really well with one another. Penelope Cruz is great. Diane Kruger, I think, might have been one of my favorite characters in the entire film. And Sebastian Stan's just like eating every scene away. That goes as far to show how amazing they are as actresses to the point where they can elevate above all the one note characters, one note dialogue that doesn't give you any sort of inkling to really love them but I did love them because of their performances and really much just because of who they are. I, I thought it was great to see them in here working alongside one another. This is the thing with spy movies. If it's not great, I'm not going to get into it. And, and that's one of the things about this movie. But I will give credit where credit is due. 
while I didn't love the action, we'll talk about that, I did like the spy elements. I liked when they were actually sneaking around, tailing people, following them around, taking out people silently. That was the spy element that I was really into. And there's a couple sequences in here that I actually was like, I wanted more of this. I wish they went for more of a more smaller, subtle approach. There's this whole sequence of all of them working together going throughout this giant crowded favela with people walking around and taking out people silently trying to tail the right person and it is very intense it's one of like the only great sequences throughout this movie but it was easily my favorite one this following sequence did keep up that intensity and you actually started to feel some of the stakes as certain things got more dangerous as it went on and it just turns into an action montage and again, we'll talk about those action scenes in a second, but I wish they went more with the smaller, subtle approach of the spy stuff, because when that is going, it's firing on all cylinders, and that's when the movie's actually going good. Also, I will give credit where credit is due. There is one moment towards the third act, because I did find a lot of the story be predictable, and you'll probably hear me reiterate that again, but there is a point where you actually do feel the stakes in here. I wish they would have built up to that moment a little bit better, but there's a moment in here where my jaw hit the floor. I'm like, oh shit. Okay, well that just raised the stakes up way higher than I expected. This is where we kind of go down to my mixed category now, because like I said, it, I wish it would have built up to that point a little bit more. There's so many moments in here where you don't really care about the characters. I can't tell you a single character's name in here, and I literally just got done watching the movie. At the same point in time of that, saying there's a moment towards the third act that I really liked... But the build up to that, there was no build up. So when it happens, and if you blink, you miss it. And it's a jaw dropping moment. But for me, in that moment, I was sitting there going, God, I wish I loved these characters because I would have just been very emotional at what just happened on the screen. Well, I do think the story is at least decent enough to enjoy it. It's never truly engaging and it feels lifeless in those avenues because you can't get on board with these characters because you don't know anything about them. They're held at arm's length almost the entire way through. And again, the one reason you're cheering for them is because of the actresses and their performances. I, like I mentioned, I really dug the spy sequences in here, but when they actually started going and fighting and shooting, the editing was so jarring at times that it just feels like it was trying to be a wannabe born ultimatum. And... I don't know why we keep doing shaky cam. Stop doing shaky cam. Because when you're just shaking the camera like this and it's going everywhere, it doesn't work for the film and you can't see all the great stylized fight choreograph going on. Don't get me wrong, like there were certain action sequences in here where I was like, okay, this is great. And then you cut and then you cut and then you cut and you just make it such a headache to watch. And I'm like, it was going so good. Why did you do that? Also weird up close shots and moving in and it doesn't even go to just the fighting sequences. There's actually some chase sequences in here as well that do the same thing. Directing choices from Simon Kimberg are actually really baffling to me because again, Dark Phoenix, while not a perfect movie, I actually thought the action sequences in the third act were pretty damn good. And I wish he would have brought that same style here. It just feels like a wannabe born film. And it just feels like so many different spy movies nowadays that try this. Mile 22 was another film a couple years back that tried that same thing. And it just, it butchered all the action. I could give one hell about the story. But if you have great action, I will forgive a lot. Sadly, when you just have a decent story and bad action, that's when it turns me off and just again feels lifeless and bland. And speaking about lifeless and bland again, the action's just mindless. You just sit there just eating it and forgetting it the second it happens. And the whole story in itself is very convoluted in that nature. And while enjoyable as you're trying to figure out and see how it's going to end, I just wanted to be latched onto these characters because they seem like good characters that just needed more time in the oven to cook. Like I did mention, um, while this is a decent story it is very predictable you can definitely guess from a to z to b to all sorts of things like that you know what is going to be happening in this there's it's this is a script that definitely even though i speak about the film itself needing more time to cook the script needed more time to cook this feels like a very first written draft and i'm kind of shocked that these actresses were on board for it i'm really curious to see what actually brought them on board to the project was it simon kinberg was it not was it something else in the script and maybe the script and something happened within the editing i'm very curious to see the behind the scenes stuff on this movie because i just the, everything's there to make for a great movie and I know making a movie is hard. Never made one, but I made a couple shorts and they were difficult. So I can't imagine making a full-fledged film. And I have nothing against Simon Kinberg or anyone that developed this movie. But I wanted more. And I expected a lot more. And I wanted to love this damn thing. Even though I went in with expectations checked. But 
man, just what happened? 355, it's the type of movie, again, that you find on FX one day, you watch, you think it's gonna be great when you read the description, and it's even seen the cast, but then you watch it and you're like, that's just, it was fine, it was good, it was decent, and then you forget about it the next day. This is a very forgettable, lifeless movie that has characters that you really can't latch onto, but the performances are great from them. They're truly the reason to watch this. I like the more subtle, smaller spy elements in here. I actually think that's what makes this movie good at times. In fact, even really good at times. But when you count in this convoluted story that at times just really brings out these one-note characters that you don't care about, and they have these jaw-dropping moments that are great, but no build-up to that. There's no suspense or intensity to it at all, really, throughout its two-hour runtime. And when you can't mix in a great action either, it just, again, feels lifeless and bland. Up here for a one-time watch. But after that, I don't... I will never think about this movie again after I'm done editing this video and posting it. Like, th this will be it for me. I didn't hate this movie. I didn't love this movie. I didn't even like this movie. I just thought it was fine. Like, I will never think about this movie again, and that's why I'm gonna give the 355 a D+. Plus. One reason I'm giving it that D plus is because of the performances and some of the smaller spy elements. That That is, that's really it. I'm actually really frustrated by this movie because I, it should have been better. It should have been great. Concept, great actresses, great idea. Just not brought about in the best light. But, you know, it's 2022. It's the beginning of the year. I'm sure there will be some other great things. I did see one other movie today that the review will go up later next week. And that movie was actually pretty good. So we'll talk about that very soon, guys. But thank you so much for watching this. You guys are seriously all the best. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Comment down below your guys' thoughts. How excited are you for the 355? And, of course, make sure, again, guys, to hit that like and subscribe button. If you want to see movies early, head on over to Sierra Films on how to see those. And, of course, until next time, stay classy.